Hi, I'm Patrick, and I'm Liv, and this is the Maki Vlog. In a previous video, we talked about the fact that we are going solar here at our house, but we wanted to do this new video because there's some big rule changes that are coming up. If you are considering solar, we wanted to talk about those today. So let's go. First of all, this is mostly focused on anybody in California, these rule changes that are coming up, but there is still a lot of good info if you're considering going solar. We're gonna cover some other stuff that isn't particular to California, but first of all, we wanna talk about the big rule change that is coming to California starting on April 14th and why you actually do need to be in a hurry to uh, sign up to get solar if you're considering it. No one likes pushy salespeople, and this is a weird situation to be in. We're not trying to push you to do anything, but we kind of are <laughs> because this is a big deal. After April 15th, if you 14th. don't do April 14th, if you don't do the right things, you will have 75% less um, benefit basically from solar. So it is a big deal. We don't benefit from you getting solar. Um, we are partnered with Energy Sage and they're a free service. So if you go use them, that's great for you and, and great for us. But we don't benefit from you going solar. You just should really do this right now. And we'll tell you why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's something that like we just moved in on December 11th and on December 15th, they voted for the rule change. Uh, we thought about going solar, but then that like really pushed us. And right now there's a lot of companies out there that know that this rule change is coming up. We've started getting bombarded because we, you know, we put it out there that we're looking to get solar. So there's a lot of pushy salespeople that are, you know, talking about like, we got to get you into solar right now. And part of that is true, but um, we're a little bit worried that there are some people out there that are over promising what they can get done. They may be saying like we, uh, some, sort of slight misinformation. We, I talked to one company or one company emailed and said like, you have to get it installed by April and we're the only company that can do it or one of the few or whatever. That's actually not true. Uh, the, the key is to get your net metering application submitted to SDGE or PG&E, whoever your energy provider is by the 14th and then you're good. And you're not just good for like, okay, this next year, it means that you will be on net metering 2.0 for 20 years. So we keep talking about net metering and net metering 2.0, 3.0. I guess we should explain a little bit more about what that is. Net metering is basically just a billing process. When you have your solar system tied to the, uh, the grid. So what it means is, is like we produce a bunch of solar when it's sunny outside, we generate excess solar. It gets pumped into the grid. Of course, we don't pay for what we're you know, using, uh, but what we put into the grid, we get credits for. And then at night when there's no sun, then we use those credits to use energy from the grid. And uh, it, it's a bit complicated on how the credits work, but just know that after April 14th, if you get a new system, it's about 75% less uh, valuable to use those credits. So, you know, it's sort of, sort of like a, not a 75% off, it's gonna be a 75% more costly uh, factor to get those uh, energy credits back. So it means now's the time to do solar if you're in California. And if you're not in California, a lot of different areas are looking at rule changes. They you know, are constantly reevaluating how uh, their energy companies are handling solar. So it's something that you should investigate, and that's something that Energy Sage will help you with as well. So not only can you help help you get like connected with solar providers, solar installers, but they also have a lot of uh, articles. They have experts that know different areas of the country, so you can connect with them to get that really, really good information that like we didn't know when we got started, and they helped us get all of that info. And they do have webinars as well, so we'll list them down below. There are a bunch that are coming up. Uh, yeah, this is a rush right now if you're in California. It is a rush. Uh, and if you've ever thought about going solar, now would be the time it would be most beneficial for you unless you are able to get a battery at the same time. 
Uh, people asked us after our last video, have you considered adding, adding a battery, things like that. Yes, we would love to add a battery, but that really adds a large amount of expense to this initial purchase. In our case, our home is older, so we also have to do some work on the roof. So it's already a large purchase. But if you're going to add a battery anyways, then this could help you offset the issues that you're going to experience with switching from net metering 2.0 to 3.0. Basically, um, you don't have to worry as much about uh, pulling back from the grid because you're going to be using the energy in your battery. And that's something else that uh, I, I talked to our energy advisor with Energy Sage because we were sort of thinking like, do we want to go battery or do we want to go more panels and potentially do a battery later down the road? And I wasn't sure about this question, uh, but they, they provided an answer for me. So with the net metering application, as long as we're in by April 14th, we get everything installed. And then like next year we decide we want a battery, we can add a battery. But if we went with like a smaller system because we wanted to buy a battery and we couldn't afford to do both, um, you can't add panels. So that's, that's like another huge key piece of information whatever you submit by April 14th is what you're going to be stuck with. So, uh, it, and it's for 20 years. So you get this like agreement in place for 20 years. If you decide in three or four years, like, Hey, I want to add another EV charger or something like that. That's going to boost me up. And I, I, I like, I want to add some more panels. You can do it, but it'll kick you over into the new rules with the reduced value of those, uh, basically energy credits. So, when you're doing this, make sure you right size your system. And actually another key point is if you have solar right now and you're thinking about resizing, you want to go ahead and do that now. Or if you are one of those you know, brave people that have had solar for like 18 years or something like that, you know you're getting close to the end of the life of your system, it might be worth talking about doing the upgrade now quickly before you lose your, your, you know, whatever system you're under, you're probably under uh, NIM 1.0, uh, but you're going to lose that and be kicked into 3.0. But if you upgrade now, you can at least get 2.0. So, uh, and I don't even know what NIM 1.0, that's too long ago for me to know. And another thing to be aware of is that if you are, if you've had a solar system installed, like let's say the past couple of years, the switch to NAM 3.0 is not going to knock you into another 20 years or whatever. Whenever you got the system installed is when the counter starts. So if you got it five years ago, then you have 15 years left of net metering 2.0. So that's also just something to be aware of. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to you know, weigh and balance, um, not to mention the fact that you have to pick who's going to install your system. We have sort of our own thoughts about like, we want to make sure it's a reputable company that doesn't do just solar, but you get to decide that. But one of the ways that can really help you again, going back at Energy Sage, they vet the people that are submitting quotes to you and make sure that they're reputable companies. And like when we did that, we had like five or six companies that submitted quotes or proposals for what size system that we should have. And it literally like listed like the price per kilowatt hour or watt hour or something like that. I forget. But anyways, like it, there, there was basically a marketplace I could log in. So it made sure I wasn't getting like some of these, like first of all, non-reputable companies or people that were overpricing thing, knowing that like, oh, everybody's in a rush to get it. We can charge a bit extra. They can't do that because they know their quote is gonna be there with five other people and I can literally look line by line and it, I can look at the uh, energy stage will also say like, they're providing you with the best inverter available. The, this company's providing you with an okay inverter. So they even like evaluate the equipment that people are proposing as well. So fantastic and easy way to evaluate who is potentially gonna provide you with service. And a lot of, you know, like what I first thought about, I was like, yeah, just anybody can install this stuff, right? You know, it's just like, put some panels up, make sure they don't damage the roof, then we're good. But the thing about it is, is uh, you're gonna have these solar panels on your roof for 20, 25, hopefully longer. So you want to make sure there's good warranties, but you also want to make sure there's a good company that will be around in 10 years to go look at your solar panels. If you're saying like, hey, I, I, an inverter died, um, can you guys come and take a look at it? You want it to be a company that you know responds quickly. Um, so it all goes back to making sure that these companies are vetted, 
which is what Energy Sage is helping to do as well. Yeah, and this is, like I said, a weird situation because you don't want to be pressured into making such a big and expensive decision. Uh, but these people, some of them might try pressure you, right? A lot of people might say, just use Costco, just use Sunrun, and then they come and pressurize you, especially with the rush that you're in right now. So be extra careful, vet these people, whether you use Energy Sage or just Google or word of mouth, whatever it is, do what you feel comfortable with, but take your time to vet them and also be in a rush if you're in California. <laughs> but I do want to emphasize, you don't have to have your system turned on and um, active on the grid by April 14th. You have to have your application submitted by April 14th. And your contractor should handle that part of it for you, but you want to make sure they know how to do that stuff. But to get to that point, you of course have to get the quotes, then you have to pick who you want. Um, they'll have to come out and do a site survey. After they do the site survey, they'll design your system. After they design your system, then they will start submitting for the permits from your city. Uh, you'll have to get HOA approval. and If you have one. Yeah, and then at the same time, they will um, submit the application to, you know, for us, like SDG&E, uh, to, to get net metering. And if there's any errors in that application, you want to make sure that they have time. So long story short, you don't want to wait till, you know, April 10th and go like, all right, let's, let's go do it. What I've seen being recommended by Energy Sage as well as others is try to get to the point of where you've selected your solar installer by March 3rd. That gives them enough time to go through all of that stuff and then get your application submitted and verified by April 14th. And of course, everybody else is getting the same bit of information. So I would do it like tomorrow, seriously. Yeah, and if you are trying to decide where to spend your money and you're like us and you may not have the money for a battery straight away, uh, our advice would be to invest in panels, oversize wisely, of course, talk to your advisor with Energy Sage or your solar installer or even your friends who have solar and try look at your bills and this is stuff that they'll all do with you. So make sure that you are getting the right amount of panels for what your household will become um, because that, that'll be where you want to spend your money now. Worry about a battery later. You can also worry about upgrading your panel later. That's something that will not change your net metering. So um, just oh, your, your electrical, electrical panel. panel. Sorry, yeah. I was like, I see your face. Uh -huh. you, you can worry about upgrading your electrical panel later, which is something that we might have to do if we want to start switching to more electrical appliances and things like that. So we're going to worry about that later. We're getting as many panels as we can for what we estimate we'll need. And that's where we're putting our money right now. Yeah. It, basically, you make your own decisions. If you want to go with the battery now, there's nothing wrong with that. No, um, it's great. Just Especially our budget, we were just going maximize panels now. And th another little thing was, it's like we may want a battery in a couple of years, but who knows, in a couple of years, we may have a car that can do vehicle to grid. And if we can do that, then we may just use that as our, our, our battery system, which isn't as good as something that's like permanently mounted to the wall for some people. So it, it might work out perfectly for us. We work at home. Yeah. So, well, we got a weed eater. We have someone doing some gardening behind us. I hope they're using electric gardening tools. <laughs> should go off It's them. going to be required in California soon, but <laughs> it is, I think it, I think it is electric that we hear. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to clarify. I said something earlier. Uh, I think it was like, we don't gain anything from you using Energy Sage or going solar. We are partnered with Energy Sage. So if down the line you use Energy Sage and one of their um, vetted people and get solar, then we do get a kickback. We um, we don't call it a kickback. A what do we get? I don't know. A commission. <laughs> this is not the first time doing this stuff. And I also want to be like 100% transparent. Um, so that you know, and and y so that you know, right? We're not trying to influence you. We're trying to share information and be very upfront about that. It's really loud here all of a sudden. Um, but yeah, you use, go with whoever you want to use, get solo wherever. If you choose to use our link through Energy Sage, thank you so much. Know that you are supporting this channel and supporting us, and we truly appreciate that. If you choose not to, and if you're not comfortable with that, you can just go to energysage.com, not energysage slash EV Explored, which is our link. So that's okay. You can do that too. We think it's a great 
uh, tool that you can use and use it however you wish. So don't feel pressured by us. Don't feel pressured by solar, but do feel pressured by the net metering thing because, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and I mentioned it in the other video. So if you've heard this story, just skip to the end. But uh, we use Energy Sage. Energy Sage was fantastic. I uh, was super happy with them. We were at CES in Las Vegas and we're at somebody else's booth and I saw somebody with the Energy Sage shirt on. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys were fantastic. Very much appreciate all the, the help that your website provided. Um, would love to help spread the word because we're, we're believers in what you guys are doing. They're like, yeah, let's set up a meeting. So um, this isn't like they just sought us out or anything like that. We like really believe in like you know, how good Energy Sage is. Uh, it was it was basically once, because I was doing my own research, but once I found Energy Sage and could get the quotes that way, it was sort of like, cool, I'm done. Like, this is this is my center point of getting all this information. So yeah. very happy to be working with them. Yeah, and that's a whole bunch about, about that stuff. But ultimately, get solar uh, if you've ever thought about it. Get it quickly if you're in California. If you're just interested in researching stuff, use Energy Sage. Uh, and? and and just so you know, uh, because we started this research when we were closing on the house, so I went on to Energy Sage then, did all of this stuff, and then just sort of ignored it all. Mm -hmm. Like I ignored the quotes, they came in. So you could even do that. Like if you're just sort of like, eh, I don't know, I don't think I'll go solar, still go to Energy Sage, still put it in, get your quotes, and then you can just sort of sit on it. If you don't want to do anything with it, just sit on it and wait. You know, I don't advise it, but you can do that. <laughs> and I, we keep saying we're going to leave, but okay. So I did a whole bunch of like, I did posts on Facebook. I did posts on Nextdoor and was like, who would you use? And there were a lot of people who were like, Bob, you know, call this number. Or uh, they just install it themselves or things like that. So there are all sorts of options. I know 2-Bit Da Vinci has uh, some stuff going on, I think, on installing solely yourself. So that that is also an option. But for us, we wanted to use a big company, um, someone that has a good history in solar and all that. But there were definitely a lot of, you know, random people doing this stuff. Um, but so we didn't, yeah, and like through Energy Sage, we got like every single person that we dealt with there felt reputable. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were. I mean, it was like it was all good. Vetted. Uh, yeah. But as we were asking information, we were getting like uh, people in and, you, you know, you sort of like, okay, where is this company at? And you would Google it and it's like somebody's house, which is no offense to like somebody working at their house. But, you know, what if they decide to move to Hawaii? You know, yeah, <laughs> well, I don't and know. everyone has their own ways of determining um, who they want to work with. There were some people who trashed other people, which I don't love because they were trashing people that we knew were good because they're vetted and other people had said they've had them for 20 years, whatever. So, you know, um, we would love to hear your experiences, who you're looking at, who you're working with. And please do share down below so other people can learn from you and who you've worked with or whatever. Like, um, obviously, we haven't started the process yet with who we're working with. And we'll talk about that. We'll get into our own another project time. in another video. Um, but as long as it all goes swimmingly, then we'll be sharing good things about them. <laughs> yeah. But for you guys, check out the links in the description. We'll put the link to uh, Energy Sage, our partner uh, page with them, but we're, we'll also list all of their webinars that are coming up if you're in California. And again, if you're not in California, a lot of this stuff can still work through Energy Sage. They're all over the country. Um, but it, they also have like good information on net metering that isn't just California. So go and do your research. And um, I think we're good, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I just remember. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, okay, there. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm saying I'll sign now. I don't have more to say. I have nothing more to say. So just remember that whatever you drive, whether you do it quietly or you talk a lot about stuff in the car, I don't know. Enjoy the ride. Bye. Bye. <laughs>